Well, it's been a year since Air India began an entire transformation of the airline. It is very much a new Air India now. It's part of a process which is called Vihan.ai, and it's not just for now, it's very much for the future. What has really changed in the, air, in the airline? What's going to really define Air India in the future? We've got a wonderful guest with us, the CEO and MD of Air India. Thanks very much uh, for being with us, Mr. Wilson. It's great to speak to you. Uh, and we've had a chance to speak a few months back, but something has changed. Firstly, the livery, I think it looks great. Uh, and it's a truly international look. That's what you're trying to sort of get into, right? Yes, uh, look, confident representing the new India. Uh, carries elements of our heritage, both Air India's heritage as well as those of the other Tata Group airlines. Obviously, the Aub mm -hmm. Aubergine represents Vistara, um, represents the window, which is iconic with Air India, but treated in a new style. Um, we think it, it, it is classy, modern, international, uh, respects heritage, but really allows Air India to look brightly towards the future. So tell us the inside story. How much back and forth was there within the Tatas and Air India on the scheme, you must have had various ideas and iterations and thoughts. Was it difficult to arrive at this? No, I, I think we were quite uh, impressed with the, some of the first options that came to us. Clearly, we went through a process, both uh, Air India, then Air India Board, then with Tata more broadly, including uh, Mr. Tata himself. Uh, and I think we're, we're very happy with what we've arrived at. And what is the message, the essential message of the new Air India, which includes the livery, but so much more? Mm. Well, during this whole Vihan process, the, the mantra has been, we want Air India to be a world-class, high-quality, customer-centric airline with the latest of technology, punctual, reliable, uh, consistent, and of course, good value flying people around the world. In this particular mm -hmm. manifestation, we want also to, to represent the new India, you know, confident, warm, hospitable uh, and, and you know, essentially take the new India to the world on new Air India. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Vihan and, and where are you in the Vihan process now? Where do you aspire to be? Hmm. So Vihan was a five year, is a five year process. Uh, we're a year into it, as you rightly say. The first six months really we spent focusing on trying to address some of the accumulated issues of the past. And I think that, that's well in the public domain, so we won't dwell on those. This current 12 months, of which we're halfway through, is really about making sure that we are putting in place the platform that allows us to significantly expand and deliver the product quality mm -hmm. that we aspire to do. So technology, systems, the aircraft order, uh, people, uh, all of the other things that go behind making a world-class airline. This 12 months is about getting them together, making them work in sync, so that these 470 aircraft that we have coming uh, can sit and grow on a strong base. We'll talk about the aircraft in a moment, uh, and that really does interest me, you know, new technology, a lot of new routes, etc., etc., but the old Air India and the, the, the culture of the old airline and what you're aspiring for now, um, integrating, um, you know, an, an old way of thinking perhaps with a new way of thinking, a relatively old aircraft with what you aspire for now. How has that been a huge challenge going across the board, you know, engineering uh, to flight crew, et cetera, et cetera? Oh, it's the number one challenge because we are you're going almost from a, what was a declining business to one that's accelerating at a rapid pace. Uh, we, we have a, a Team Air India that had been used to a particular way of operating for you know, decades, which has now almost changed under people's feet overnight. Yeah. Uh, and, and so there is a significant shift. And, and you know, firstly, I, I really want to say how impressed and, and grateful I am to the team for making this shift so constructively and, and, and so quickly. But it is not easy for anyone. So we're putting a lot of training in place. We're hiring a lot of people so that there's the mix of the experience and, and, and new. Uh, there's a lot of benchmarking being done so we understand what good looks like and, and uh, supporting that with technology and, and uh, other perspectives. And what's been really pleasing is that it took a while for people to understand what really world-class looked like. Mm. But now I think that that is internalized quite consistently and people are now starting to think, okay, what are the capabilities that we need to start exceeding that now yeah. in certain areas? So that part has, has been a, a, a lot of work. I think people have put in a lot of effort, achieved some success, uh, but clearly it's not a finished task and yeah. we'll have to keep at it. In terms of the equipment, um, look, 
th there was a, a, a issue with aircraft product in-flight entertainment uh, that had not been kept up to, to up to date, unfortunately, for whatever reason. We've spent a lot of time trying to get this rectified, uh, if, if nothing else, but to restore the functionality of seats, restore the functionality of in-flight entertainment, which we've successfully done in business class. There's still right. a little bit of work to do in economy class. Um, but recognizing that we would always be chasing the tail given the 15-year-old you know, product, uh, that's why we committed to the $400 million of complete refurbishment of all of the wide-body aircraft with new seats, new in-flight entertainment, new galleys, new lavatories, essentially a complete replacement of the interior, uh, which is well underway of both planning as well as production of the seats. And the installation of those seats will commence on the first aircraft in the middle of next year. Right. In addition to those refurbished aircraft, then of course there's new aircraft we have coming in. Uh, thus far we've got se uh, six 777s already yeah. entered the fleet serving uh, routes to mm -hmm. North America and London. We have five more coming in over the next four or five months. And we have six of our new A350s coming in before March of 2024, which will mean that by March 2024, about 30% of our wide body aircraft will sure. be of a modern standard. So it's taking time. There's a lot of work going in, um, yeah. but we're underway. Um, just getting a lot of the, um, the air into aircraft, which had been grounded for a large period of time, back into the air, that's been a process. Now, these aircraft didn't necessarily fly a great deal, but they'd been grounded for various reasons, parts, etc., etc. That's been a big priority, not only to enhance your, um, your fleet strength, but obviously to get you into new routes, uh, accommodate more passengers. How much of a challenge was just that process, getting these planes back into the air? It, it was a significant process because there was, uh, if I recall, about 30 aircraft yeah. that, that had been grounded. Um, I believe we're, we're, we've got two aircraft, two wide-body aircraft at least, that are still in the process of being recovered, although we've got line of sight now as to when they can come. If some of these aircraft required thousands of parts in mm -hmm. totality. You know, I think we're not now up to about 40,000 parts that we've needed to acquire to wow. get these aircraft airworthy. And it's no secret that the world is undergoing a supply chain crunch. Yes. Yes. And so getting those parts um, and, and, and installing them has taken some time. But we're nearly at the end of that journey, uh, thankfully. And yeah. that's, that's what has allowed us to increase service to five new cities in the last, uh, you know, already this year, right. uh, international cities, and expand frequency on others. So it was just one of those things that we needed to work through. So, uh, and I know you get asked this often, when will there be a consistent product, a consistent look in Air India? You've, you've leased a number of aircraft, they've got certain features on board, you have your, um, you know, a new design coming up on your A350s, et cetera, et cetera, the new 777s, which you acquire, ultimately the Dash 9s. Um, when will it all be consistent? Well, there are two measures of consistency, sure. I guess. One, one is, will, when will it be consistently a, a modern generation product, even if it might look a little bit different? Um, that, I think, will work towards by the end of 2025. As I say, the first of our existing aircraft go into refit middle of next year. The seats and all the other equipment is already being produced. Um, that process to work through more than 40 aircraft takes time. We can't ground all the aircraft that's at once, obviously. Uh, so that's why it will take into 2025. Uh, but by the end of 2025, there will be consistency with respect to modern product, modern aircraft. Look and feel will take a little bit longer because in some cases it's just not worth changing all of the, the, the sure. softer furnishings on an aircraft that we might not be owning for a long time. Right. But from a comfort and experience perspective, you know, color doesn't matter so much. The new routes that your A350s offer, uh, the 777-9s when they eventually arrive, what are we looking at? Well, initially, because the A350 is the first of its type in India, yeah. you know, we're the first Indian operator of this aircraft, there is quite an extensive um, ramp up process that needs to be done. And this is the same for any airline around the world. So initially the aircraft will be deployed domestically uh, and that is so that we can do the takeoffs and landings necessary to give our crew familiarity. Obviously they're doing those flights in, in the tutelage and, and in the presence of trained instructors from Airbus and from others. Um, but as we get a mm -hmm. trained pool of people we can send the aircraft farther afield, longer flights, um, ultimately Europe and Australasia probably. And then there's a little bit of extra certification that is required for us to be able to fly to North America. 
the aircraft is doing an ultra long range mission and so that's uh, probably a six to 12 month process to get the necessary certification to do that route. Yeah. So it's a progressive deployment. And in terms of new routes uh, or routes which really do need uh, an, an Indian airline, an Air India to actually get into, what would some of those um, hubs be? What, if, what would some of those points be for direct services? Well, the great, uh, the great thing about Indian aviation is that there are so many more opportunities than we have aircraft at the moment. Right. So you could almost take your pick. Uh, there are many cities in North America that would warrant uh, non-stop service from India, and not just from Delhi, yeah. from other markets. Uh, likewise, Europe, Australasia, Asia, Africa, you know, almost take your pick. I think there's, you know, th th there's a range of options and opportunities for us. And our challenge really is prioritizing which ones to start first, yeah. whether from an aircraft capability perspective or from an economic one. Yeah. Yeah, I was speaking to uh, the Civil Aviation Minister recently, we did an interview in which we spoke about the creation of hubs in India, whether they'd be a, a Dubai-like model in India or a Singapore-like model. He said it would happen in at least one city in about five years from now. And to me, uh, that, that has to be if Air India actually grows the way that uh, you know, we, we, we think that it might. Um, do you believe that five years, you, know, you will be up there to make, say, Delhi into a hub where people fly to Delhi and then go elsewhere, as opposed to, say, flying to Qatar or to Dubai? Well, I think it's not binary, you either don't or you do. Air India already carries people from Europe into Delhi and they connect onwards to Asia or Australasia. As a proportion of our total traffic, it's relatively small, but as we expand our frequency, as we improve our product, uh, as the transit experience in, in Delhi improves, that will just get increasingly more. So it already is a hub. Now, will it become the mega hub of the likes of others? In terms of volume of people, absolutely yes. Mm -hmm. But the structure will change because India has such a huge point-to-point -point yeah. demand, uh, whether from city or whether from country going to somewhere else. So the international to international component of our hub is almost certainly going to be smaller than it would be at a city-state which doesn't have that supporting population that, mm -hmm. that we enjoy. But absolutely, we should have hubs, larger hubs in India. Yeah. There can, and in my view, should be more than one. It is a key part of Air India's future plan. Right. And so we're fully aligned. Yeah. The Director General of Civil Aviation has come out with some concerns on safety. And there's been a suspension of a senior official as well. Why has, why has that taken place? And what are you doing to ensure that you know, safety is priority number one? Mm. Well, there's, there's a lot of reasons um, why Air India is what it is. It's had a long history, uh, has a, a background uh, as part of um, the, the government that's imbued a certain culture. Yeah. Uh, and you know, we're spending a lot of time bringing in people, bringing in training, bringing in systems, bringing in consequence management, uh, and really demonstrating what uh, you know, world-class standards are in a safety environment. We're, we're actively plugging into external bodies, whether it be IATA or AAPA and others, to ensure that the, the airline deeply, deeply understands the standards that are required. Promulgating them through an organization that has been acting in a certain way for a long time takes time. Mm. Uh, and educating people and reinforcing that standards that might have been acceptable in the past are no longer acceptable now requires constant attention. Yeah. Uh, we're not sparing any effort in making this happen. Yeah. Um, it, it is disappointing that we have these episodes, but they, they have to be episodes that we learn from. Yeah. Um, recruitment is a big priority of yours. And again, recruitment to, to have people, men and women, of the highest standard, again, to ensure, for example, flight safety. But the number of people that you need to hire is absolutely huge. So could you tell us a little bit about how you're going about that? Any numbers you can share, for example? Sure, I think we've re reported a number, a number of numbers. Uh, you know, we, we've been taking 550-odd uh, cabin crew a month, yeah, uh, inducting them into our uh, training program. Uh, 50 pilots. Thus far this year, we've recruited around 650 pilots. Yeah. Um, well more than a thousand ground staff, mm -hmm. both for new capabilities as well as to replace those that have retired. Um,
But we're blessed by the fact that we carry the name Air India. Mm -hmm. We have one of the largest order books in the aviation industry. Yeah. We can give people the opportunity to mm -hmm. move to command or to wide body aircraft to fly to some of the most interesting destinations around the world within a, almost an unprecedented time. Uh, and, and so people want to join Air India and, and it's a luxury that we have and of course you know, if you're an aviation pro professional where would you rather be? Sure. But obviously we then need to train our own people too and so we're committing more than $200 million together with some partners in our mm -hmm. training academy just down the road here in Gurgaon uh, that will pilots, cabin crew, engineers, ground staff right. uh, up to in, in steady state, maybe 20, more than 20 simulators. Yeah. So that we are investing in the needs for our own growth, but also in the needs for the industry's growth sure. in India. Um, now, you've had some good news from the Competition Commission of India. Um, so the merger of Vistara with Air India is, is now happening. I mean, it, there's no legal impediment as I understand it. Uh, was that something which you know, made you a bit nervous that is this going to happen, is it not going to happen? Uh, because if it didn't come through, then you know, your plans would have been affected. Well, we're very pleased that it's come through. Uh, it's not the end of the process uh, because in addition to India, we need to get competition clearance from a few other overseas jurisdictions. Right. Um, we then need to go through the NCLT process to effect the legal merger. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we are in uh, the stage of about to transition to the second phase of that process uh, in the next couple of weeks. And then we can then merge the two businesses. Now, whether we do merge the two businesses at that point, we, we will take a, a call later on. We've said that the future airline will probably be called Air India, mm -hmm. but we won't be merging Vistara and Air India until such time that we feel that Air India has reached the level that Vistara is. Yeah. With Vistara, part of the family, we, there's a lot we can learn from, yeah. a lot that allows us to accelerate. But we want to, you know, Air, Air India and Vistara can remain separate from a brand and operations perspective until we feel the time is right to come together. Would you necessarily want to merge them beyond a point? Because Vistara's identity is, is established. It's an outstanding carrier by any definition. Um, and it's done so well, it's a new airline. So what is your thinking on that? I mean, it's one thing to merge the business, but in terms of the look or the name, can they potentially remain separate? Oh, anything is possible, but I think part of the reason that Vistara has been successful is a very young airline. It was built on latest technology. It had new aircraft. Uh, and, and these are things that Air India will have in due course too. Right. So it, it, it's you know, inevitable in my view, and we will not stop until Air India reaches at least Vistara's level. Yeah. At the same time, Air India carries the name Air India, yes. which is known and beloved around the world. Yes. Uh, and you know, has 91 years of history and heritage and, and, and recognition. Uh, so I think you know, logically, internationally, um, Air India is by far the better name to have. Yeah. Um, Product-wise, Air India should and will get to the level of Vistara in due course. Yeah. There's of course Air Asia and Air India Express as well. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that experience in, in, in merging them? Um, I was on an Air Asia flight recently. It, it had been partially painted over and I presume it would be painted in air in delivery sooner than later. So it's a bit of a transition now, but it also means a transition involving thousands of personnel from both airlines. Could you tell us where that process stands? So that process is a little bit further advanced uh -huh. uh, because competition clearance was received last year. Uh, so since then we've merged the reservation systems, mm -hmm. merged the, the customer interfacing systems. It's come under a single CEO. There's now a single management team. Uh, so largely the two airlines are now operating as one. It's also a little bit easier because one was predominantly international, one was predominantly domestic, so highly complementary. Um, the brand, uh, yes, we, we need to relinquish the AirAsia brand yeah. uh, in a couple of months. Air India Express will have a new brand, mm -hmm. and so there's this transitionary period until we can put the new livery on, on things. But it's progressing well, and I think you're now starting to see some of the benefits with the two airlines interlining and selling each other. A single website, you can buy a combined itinerary of both. And in fact, now you can start seeing the synergy with the parent as well, mm -hmm. that we're seeing itineraries being offered that include the full service Air India together with the low cost side of sure. the business. You know, every few questions we come around to talking about the look and the feel of Air India. There's of course the Maharaja, which is iconic. Um, uh, 
we all grew up with the with the Maharaja. I mean, flying in the early 80s as I did on Air India, that was such a symbolic. Uh, there is symbolic of Air India. Will there be a Maharani? We sort of spoke about that in the past. You gave me a bit of a hint, but I haven't seen her appear so far. Is that a possibility? If anything's possible. I, I think let's just take it step at a time. We, we've just re released a new brand. People are still getting used to that new brand. We've said quite categorically mm -hmm. that the Maharaja is part of the future Air India. It will have a certain manifestation closer to home. It will have a, maybe a slightly different manifestation outside yeah. um, India. But we'll see how it evolves. New uniforms as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. How soon or, uh, <laughs> or in the works or top secret? or uh... in, in the works, in the works. We're still going through the selection and, and refinement process. Um, even this week we were uh, meeting with the team and reviewing some of the latest iterations. Uh, but I think that's also another exciting development in sure. the pipeline. You know, just talking about the Indian aviation sector now, uh, two airlines which are doing dramatically well, in, in, I mean, they're very large. Each airline faces challenges, Air India and Indigo. You have a full cost model um, and you are a full service uh, provider, not a full cost model, a full service provider, whereas they are a low cost carrier. Um, but they want to compete with you in the international market as well. Um, it's a different way of doing business. Um, does a low cost model potentially challenge what Air India has to offer with all of your services that we've been speaking about? I think there are different market segments and I think that's evidenced by the fact that you know, in Australia you have a full service and a low cost airline. In mm. Singapore you have a full service and a low cost airline. Germany, France, I mean you, you can sort of take your pick. Um, we will stand for full service at Air India. Uh, product quality, consistency, warmth of service, full service, meals, entertainment, comfortable seats, business class, first class, premium economy class. You know, that, that is where we believe our biggest opportunity lies. Of course, we do have a low-cost business, yes. Air India Express. Yes. And, and so if, you know, for people that uh, don't quite want those bells and whistles uh, or prefer price over you know, product and service, mm -hmm. uh, we will offer them a proposition as well. Uh, so really, our, our, our portfolio approach is to ensure that you know, we meet the needs of the consumer. Yeah. We don't necessarily dictate to the consumer what, what they should take from us. A final question, you know, you've got hundreds of aircraft coming in. Airport infrastructure in India has to match the massive orders which have been placed. Um, is that a concern? Do you see the growth that you need? Even physical parking of aircraft is, is an issue. Engineering spaces would be a concern as well. Um, what are your thoughts in that regard? I, th I think that, it, that India deserves some acknowledgement of the massive progress it has made in infrastructure development. The sheer number of airports that have been inaugurated and, and are going to be inaugurated, the new terminals that are being developed, the expansion that's occurring, Greenfield Airport as well as you know, existing airport. I, I think that needs to be recognised. Mm -hmm. Now. Does there need to be more to accommodate the aspirations of Air India in the industry? Yes, it does. But I think now there's actually a, a clearer direction for, for people to follow. Yeah. In the past, there was not an Air India that had invested in 470 aircraft and had clear aspirations to connect the world and build a hub. Yeah. So what, what could the airport operators build towards? Now there's clarity. And so we, we are in close contact with, with all of the airport operators right. on ensuring, because we, we're, we're synergistically joined at the hip. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. We, we're, we're in, in close conversation to make sure that we can realize this shared opportunity effectively. Right. So exciting times for Air India. It's been wonderful speaking to you, uh, Mr. Wilson. Um, and, uh, you know, we're all, in a sense, a shared part of the Air India experience and that journey. Let's see where the future really takes us. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you very much for your support, yeah. too.